And now we got our dirty dick beaters right around the holiest of holies, Dyson's Impeller here. I'm going to show you something shocking. <laughs> the, the, uh, <laughs> oh, oh. Lieblings, meine Damen und Herren, willkommen in der Werkstatt zurück. Was wir hier haben, ist der Sir James Große Hoden. Fink dich, Dyson! I think I hit the quick. Oh yeah. No harm, no foul though, boys. No harm, no foul. Fucking garbage. Get all this shit in there. Ah, oh, sorry. Oh, fuck. It's an Ikea flat pack. You gotta put it together yourself. Look at this. <laughs> Ridley Scott alien abortion. Boarded pipe dream, son of a diddly. Look at this thing. <laughs> I suddenly feel insecure. Time! What in the holy toast even is this? It's like a kid from the 50s got a hold of some Japanese space station designs. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Some attachments. What in the fuck? Oh, 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 I, I must have, uh, it must have taken a wrong turn. I, I, I got the, the Welsh New Zealand model here. We got the sheep grooming. I'm sure there's got to be some oversized uh, wellies in here and some Velcro gloves. <laughs> you see the Velcro gloves for the, and then the oversized wellies. Oh. Don't judge me, we've all done it. Getting right into her where the pixies meet the wall receptacle. We got here a card. And it is a 300 volt 105C, so that's good. Bao Hing. See, uh, it, it, it is nice cord though, EPDM or something similar. 17 oddball wire gauge, 17 American wire gauge. And it's got uh, retracting. Oh, isn't that nice? Fucking piece of shit. It doesn't go back. What the fuck over? Yeah. Fuck it. I already wrecked it. And, oh, ah, ha, ha. that's the problem. You gotta be smarter than the cord. Ooh, look at her go. Look at that. Just, <laughs> well, it's cold in the shop. <laughs> got a little stage fright apparently. And then we got a chintzy on off button on a lever action. Good thing you don't turn this orphan on too often because you wear that right out. Yeah, that's fucking pretty garbagey there. <sighs> Plastic fucking nightmare. Okay, there's the cartridge system. We'll have a look at that. But first, let's get into the meter. Not a screw to be found. Hey, everybody's got a dry decade, am I right? Start with the screws we can see. One can safely assume there'll be lots of prying and hurting you holding to get this thing apart. Oh, plastic nightmare. Oh, very telling here though. Uh, EN, that means English. Do not use on rubble, plaster, or ash. So apparently this has a lifetime filter. But they're telling you don't use it on rubble, plaster, or ash. Very fine particulate matter. What's happening is... Well, we'll get into it once I get into this, uh, the filter element here. Dyson big ball, well, the big ball animal. I don't know how the fuck they found out my college nickname. I don't know if there's even going to be a metal part on the whole, on the whole west. Oh, what a piece of shit. Look at this. So the axle here, the axle is just like a three eighths piece of stiff plastique. And then there is a roller bearing in there sealed, but yeah look at the sleeve what goes over there to retain that so you're relying on that wee bit of plastic in order to not break but 
I guess if you drop it, this thing's got enough give so that uh, the impact doesn't crack that right off and too. But these are very suspect to me. You got a big rolling element with a tiny little bit of meat there. You know, nah, nah, eh. I'd rather see just a replaceable, a replaceable, uh, what's it, who's it? Peeling the foreskin back on these floppy rolling elements. I mean, see what's really going on. Bit of a red herring on, on these guys. These are what's actually doing the job here. These rollers. And these are mainly for uh, what appears to be optics. Of course, red herring. People think that's uh, taking a stinky fish to throw dogs off a trail. But it's actually, it's actually because of the salt they use to uh, salt red herrings. So good salt, sodium chloride, doesn't turn flesh pink. But low quality salt has uh, saltpeters and nitrites in them, and it turns meat uh, pinkish, reddish hue. That's that's why ham is pink because they add a little uh, saltpeter in there. Uh, the nitrates, of course, carcinogenic, but makes them super delicious. There you go. The entomol or the entomology, the etymology, et etymology of uh, English lingo is amazing and. That's where red herring comes from, from using poor quality salt. The irony is not lost on Sir Dice, Sir James. I think we're getting close here. Yeah, there. No clips. Oh, yeah. Okay. So there's the lifetime filter element. It's quite robust looking. Skookum. Wouldn't want to have to change that. Plastic is uh, polycarbonate and ABS. Good impact resistance. A fairly expensive material. Oh, I don't like this. So this chintzy little switch here actuate a lot of moving parts actuates on this big long rod arm and then on this little dingus end here. How does that work? That must go. Oh, there we go. That goes up like that. So all these tiny little plastic pins, you know, three sixteenths of an inch around, hollow. Uh, polycarbonate and some nylon and stuff in there but the problem is you buy yourself a 500 doll hair vacuum and all of a sudden you retract this little fucking tab in here breaks and your retract doesn't work the thing's going right in the garbage so that's kind of unfortunate even if this is extremely robust the chintziness of all the ancillary equipment is a real it's a real letdown now, this is an excellent filter. Lots of surface area, pleats in there. So this this is the lifetime. Of course, if you get into any ashy situations, uh, it will clog up eventually. But you know, this is very likely a two or at the very minimum a hundred dollar filter, and it's not something that your average home gamer is going to replace. Gonna have to send it in. One thing that's super disconcerting, look at the chintz factor on all of these actuate holy fuck. Look at this. Just going all over the place. That is not made to last. Shame. Let's get a closer switch at this light here. Shamefully chintzy. ABS plastique all through here. A little dog bone. Look, the spring just... Uh, fuck. Super chintzy. And that, of course, is what always breaks where the 200-pound gorilla meets the tool on the on-off switch. Son of a diddly. And the thing is, as soon as this fucks up, it gets kind of... Yeah. You're going to throw this whole thing out because it won't turn on anymore. That's... That is super shitty. I mean... Even look at that spring. The spring's doing, it's not even compressing. And this is just shamefully horrific. You wouldn't expect to see something like that on a $500 tool. It's shameful. Got the motor disgorge, not looking much better in here. Super duper chintzy latching switch. Look at the size of her while rated for 18 amps. Of course, it doesn't need to be as big because it's on AC. So um, like DC tools, uh, battery operated tools, you need to break that 18 amps. But on this, in this case, because it's sinusoidal, it goes through zero. So uh, 
at, at one point it's going to have zero current going through it 60 times a 60 times a second so that's why we can get away with such a chintzy little switch still still this this is where the rubber meets the road and then looks to be a thermostatic uh, fuse in here into the motor one thing that's interesting vacuum brake here i was under the impression that you wanted as much vacuum as possible <laughs> as much negative pressure as possible but in this case they have a valve to uh to de-throttle her when the yeah that's interesting or no that's the thing these the way these work is when they're not flowing in the air they're under less load so why would you have a vacuum brake poppet valve in there it doesn't make a sense to me maybe somebody can elucidate why that would be on there in the down down below me in the doobly doo much much obliged there it is just a little spring tension poppet valve when the pressure on the effective area of this piston this guy here overcomes the spring force opens up and goes directly to the inlet of the motor that poppet valve is interesting almost like a wastegate on a turbocharger it'd be interesting to see while this is running if we can hear the hear it chooch you know that high pitched psh, the blow off there of a of a turbocharger on a race rocket and man lots of plastic holy oh fuck yeah <laughs> we've mined deep enough and found some actual metal Da, da, da. And now we got our dirty dick beaters right around the holiest of holies Dyson's impeller here. I'm going to show you something shocking. <laughs> the, the, uh, oh, 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 it's a Pana socket module. So it's, it's not even fucking Dyson. So the motor, of course. It's not a special proprietary Dyson. It's an off-the-shelf pan of socket. And you have a look at that. Wow. That appears to be bought right off the shelf from pan of socket as a module. Not a Dyson Malaysian hand in the mix at all. However, having said that now, nice uh, impeller. And it's very well fitted to the casement. Very, very tight connection. That means that we're going to get extremely good suction. Well, until this poppet valve pops off. But if we, uh, well, you know, we, we could we could add a couple washers in behind there and increase the suck. So the motor itself, sheet metal formed, rolled uh, metal tube body. It does have an actual bearing on the backside. Quite a large shaft for that size of motor. It's got mitigation for vibrations. It's got a, a little damper here. The brushes, nice big, huge brushes, and they are copper impregnated. Bus bar is not tea bag. But looking at the uh, the com the commutator and the connection, the motor winding connection to the commutator. So there's no epoxy in there. So that's where the uh, that's where that wire always breaks is right there where it gets crimped onto the com bars and then the motor itself no epoxy no uh it, it's not it's just wound around and we're relying on a hope and a prayer to keep those from shaking around and uh shorting out so that's very cheaply manufactured motor uh, not built for longevity that's for sure this assembly itself does not come a part plastic impeller um, weird looking nut didn't you see that didn't quite fill the nut <laughs> so that shaft is quite short very disappointing you know you uh, beating a dead horse here but you pay 500 plus doll hairs for a vacuum you know dyson technology this that the other thing wank here wank there you finger that at least you'd get a proper dyson motor like you'd see you know on the uh, 500 blow job or what i took apart and and the other one uh you know just that little dyson handheld animal that actually was pretty friggin skookum i, I kind of like that one other than the looks of her wow but this 
This is a different beast altogether, and uh, not in a good way. They're gonna give this a little love tap, 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 a pry and a, a pull and increase the chooch factor, hopefully. You're always safe maybe plus minus 10%, so we're gonna go on the plus side of 10%. There's the spring of my thing. We will measure that. Ah, fuck it. About that much, we're gonna give her an extra 10%. Like so, ah, there we go. That ought to do her. Now you just keep that tip between you and I. That there tip is worth its weight in gold. It's the same as a governor spring on a small engine, like for your lawnmower or your snowblower. Once she gets broken in for a season, you take the governor spring, you stretch it out a little bit. You give yourself 10% or so more, uh, mum's the word on that one. Now we're getting into the beater bar nameplate amperage six amps for the whole system it's not that uh, like for current it's nothing spectacular but recall this is the dyson animal and we have a golden reliever name a buddy what sheds every fucking words so we'll see what uh here's the motor here it almost looks like an air motor oh no complete and utter fail no electricity going through this whatsoever. Oh, isn't that fancy? The thing is, as we saw with the air-powered Dremel tool, she fucking got the torque of a wet noodle, partner. So the air comes in here. This actually bypasses the, uh, the suction flow. What this is actually designed to do is suck up dirt. So now we have flow coming in through here, turning in, uh, an impeller, which comes out on a, on a jack shaft in order to drive this. Now, yeah, yeah, terrible. This is utter, utter garbage. You're not gonna, you're gonna be able to, I'm gonna be able to stall this with my finger going like this. Just, uh, yeah, terrible fail. This thing is starting to look like an onion, stinky layer after stinky layer till all you're left with is tears. Now we're into the fancy dancy part, the cycloidal separation. First blush, the receptacle. Looks pretty good. Polycarbonate impact resistance till you get your... Yeah, look at that. Fucking garbage. Garbage. Too thin to be any use at all. Now, we get into here. And there is a filter in here, a washable filter. I wasn't aware of that when I first took it apart. Looks like the Fleshlight uh, Pantaloon Edition. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, my. Well, at least you can wash it. Now, the cycloidal separation is actually a thing. It's used to have been used in industry for 100 years for slurries, uh, wet materials, dry materials, dust, and so forth. What happens here is air comes in, the ball bearings get filtered out by this mesh screen, comes in uh, around the periphery of these cones, it gets accelerated around the periphery. It makes two counter rotating jets inside. Clean air comes up through the middle and gets sucked into the motor, or rather pushed in, depending on how pedantic, pedantic you are. And then the dirt and schmoo goes down into the receptacle, falls down into the receptacle. It's a, it's a density separation uh, technology. It's been around for 100 years. Dyson didn't invent it. He's probably the first guy that what put it into a vacuum. But now these are all off patents. So if you see the cycloidal separation, yeah, it works good and it saves your filter elements. But here's the thing. The smaller the particle, the harder it is to separate because the difference in density between a moat of human skin and air is very little. That's why we see dust particles floating in the air. So you need to have a filter. And we witness that and we have a kind of pre-filter uh, washable fleshlight type dealio here. And we also have that big pleated for life filter in the canister itself but you saw they're covering their arses because no ash no debris or no construction detritus this works but only up to a point now we're going to do some testing hopefully I put this back together proper oh 
would appear so. <laughs> and I also got, uh, we're going to check how loud it is. We're on the decibel uh, C, oh, what do you call this? C weighting and slow reaction time. So, well, let's just turn it on. And also, we're checking with the kilowatt to see what's going on electrically with the thing. Let's give her a go here. You try that with an old school electric, you come away with a nickname of Stubby. <laughs> Fucking garbage. Let's give her a try here. Very likely at ear level, you're probably 85, 80, 85 decibels. So you're you're right on the cusp of needing hearing protection for that. 712 watts running, 6.04 amps, a power factor of 98%. I don't believe that because it's a universal motor, but yeah maybe there's some noise that's interfering with the kilowatt it is a you know it's a consumer device not a power factor meter so the efficacy of a household vacuum is a function of the massive airflow as well as the ultimate the the peak vacuum it's not just peak vacuum and we can see in some of the implements here we have little holes in the side not at the suction head but so i've covered those all up in order to get the the peak vacuum the contact now that sucks good and proper so that was around nine uh inches of mercury well minus the yeah this is the best vacuum we've seen yet for sure as far as ultimate vacuum so no lack of chooch there i think the vacuum itself is going to be quite effective i'm just very disappointed at the build quality and the overall engineering of it it's just extremely chintzy something you'd expect i'd be happy with this at 150 bucks but it's actually my wife told me and i almost i almost made sick 600 fucking doll hairs canadian I'm getting all choked up here so if it weren't for doing a teardown on this it would be a total loss in keeping with the aliens theme the face sucker we'll give her a try oh yeah i don't know what it does but it's spinning my thing's pretty fucking fast Look at this fucking <laughs> Vacuum assist wool sheep card herder thing. My 80 pound lap dog's gonna jump right out of his skin. I come at him with this. <laughs> Probably turn chickadee to hamburger meat in the process, too. Ah, oh, for frog snacks. The dingus end ain't even long enough. Uh, the noozle on the hose. So, well, obviously I own it now because I took it apart. But, uh,. <laughs> if you buy one of these don't bust up the box because yeah i mean what you're paying for is the wank you're paying for the marketing wank which is unfortunate i got that other little handheld animal it's a fine little rig for the shop but uh you know it was yeah i thought it was expensive at 200 bucks but this fucking thing there you have it dyson big ball animal piece of yunk well it'd be okay at a buck a buck 50 six hundred doll hairs hey you're showing off for the ladies auxiliary about uh, how vain you are and how wasteful how, how how well you can waste money because this thing is not engineered to last the uh, switch is all plastic every little tab and nook and cranny on the thing is a cheap plastic little dingus and what's flapping in the breeze got a pan of socket motor in there not even a dyson come on Come on, that's uh, it's all show and no go. All marketing wank, avoid at all costs. At, at least, at the very least, on the bright side, well, we got ourselves a vacuum and saved somebody else from making the same mistake. Thanks for watching. Keep your deck in the vice.